Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be checking out the new Navigraph Charts update. In this update, there are six brand new features. There's the route calculation, there's colorful route string visualization. I'm not sure if that really counts as a feature, but Navigraph says so. <laughs> procedure visualization and the intelligent procedure selector. Uh, there's map overlay now, which is awesome. And the SimBrief integration, which is absolutely awesome as well. Let's go show you all of these features. But before I do that, I do want to say this is just the update video. This isn't going to be a full whack in sort of feature. This is this, this is that, how to use Navigraph sort of thing. This is just showing you what the new features are. I guess there is a seventh one, which I kind of like. You can do a world map now. You won't see any of the airways or VORs, but you get to see like London, there's Heathrow. Um, and yeah, Kidlington Airport there, my home airport. We have the world map now, which is pretty cool. So the first feature is the route calculation. Basically, it's just an updated flights, new flight setup. So you would have three new sections. You've got manual input, you've got the FOM plan file, and you've got the FOM sim brief. We'll be checking that out last. Um, so manual input, you can choose the different chart modes, IFR or the airline. And you can obviously do your origin airport uh, to your arrival airport. Okay, that is probably like the shortest flight in the world. I don't know who would do that. Catwick to Heathrow, hey ho. Um, so this is the route. You can either auto generate it here and do high or low airways, or probably the low um, for this. Or you don't have to do that. You can click create and it will just do the directs. If you didn't do that, if you forgot to do the auto route, you can always do it here and calculate. It probably won't do anything for the high airways, we'll see. Oh, it does. And what we'll do is if you've got a route, it'll be in the red color. So this is the colorful route string visualization feature. Um, pink is obviously the departure and green is the arrival. Um, if you don't have, like, you don't want to do the auto route, you can type your route in yourself. Uh, if you've got a route from PFPX, I'll show you how to import that. So I'm just going to clear this route and click yes. And in fact, I'm going to unload this flight. So if you don't want to fly this, you can either just click new flight or you just unload it. You don't want any flight in there. So you can now import the flights via a PNL file. This is the typical file that you would find from prepared. Uh, so just a flight plan file. PFVX can export a flight plan file .pnl uh, to your prepared version 4 folder. So if you opened this and select the flight plan, um, you would want to go to this PC documents and the prepared version 4 files. You can see all of these are .pnls. So let's just go and find the last flight I did at the time of recording this, which was Birmingham to Belfast. Let's we'll open this. And you can see it's it's got the route, it's got the actual departure that we programmed in, not the departure runway, so there is a little bit of a gap there. I'll show you how to do that later. Get rid of this, there we go. And it's got the arrival, obviously, in the green dotted. Because uh, it's green dotted, there's no route. If it was green solid, there would be a, an arrival route planned. Um, so yeah, you can see this is pink solid, because there is a, a departure SID in there. So with the route, loaded what you can do is you obviously can scroll through the whole route see the different uh, like airways and waypoints and VORs that you'd go through and um, you can always just click on the airport and you can click open chart lists like so and this is how you would get to this chart list that you've seen before with Navigraph charts and click the X if you want to get rid of that or you can just bring down the arrow and you can quickly select these like so if you want SimBrief to be integrated in this, you first need to put your SimBrief username in. So you go up to open account settings. Yes, my name is Lordian Hug. Uh, that was my uh, 
my old name, and uh, I should probably email Navigraph, see if I can change that. Anyway, um, they need to fix this thing, because when I hover over or click on something, it just goes away, which is kind of annoying, I don't want to do that. Um, you, want, you want to go to Account Settings, Settings, then what you do, you put in your SimBrief username here, so for me it's just my name, and you click Save, and boom. Then you go to Flights, you do the new flight again, and you go to From SimBrief, and my latest SimBrief OFP, so make sure you export an OFP, anything, just generate an OFP, uh, it will find it, and it will take your latest one, uh, which was Heathrow to JFK. And what we'll do, that will load it up, obviously that's not a very realistic route from Heathrow to JFK, that was one, <laughs> one headwind, that, that will take a, quite a while, normally they would fly it way up there. Um, but yeah, and that's how you do that, and the same, it will do the departure, and hopefully arrival is in there as well. No, it's not. But yeah, you get the point, and that's that. And once again, the route will be in there, as you can see. So those are all the route calculations, all the route um, visualization stuff. Let's get on to the next feature of the procedure visualization. So I'm going to show you the visualization now. Uh, it can be done for SIDS and STARS, and it's absolutely awesome. But we're going to use the same route that we just did earlier. And we're going to take a look at the arrival. You can do exactly the same for the departure. It works exactly the same. So um, we're going to do arrivals. We're going to click show visual overlay. Obviously, no uh, star actually works for our route because there wouldn't normally be an aircraft coming in like this. But if you had a, a route that was actually realistic, you can see all the different arrivals and you can change the arrival for the certain runway, so let's say you're landing on 04 left, it will do all the different ones for that. Uh, but knowing G uh, GFK, you always have vectors into final, so that probably all these stars are all the same. <laughs> so, if you had a route that would end up at Kenenbunk, I think that's how you say that, you would know that you want to do this part 3 or rubber 2, and obviously you'd work out, depending on which runway you would do, uh, for your approach, you'll choose the different one. Obviously the different colors as well, so you can kind of understand which one's which a lot easier. And once you find the one you want, you just click on it, and then you click Add to Route. So this is a route that I did last week. This was a full flight video. You can see there's an arrival and departure SID in there. And for example, if you didn't have a, a SID or star, I'm just gonna remove these like so. So they're just gone now. Um, so it's like that, and you don't have one, and your first waypoint is RTUP, hopefully your route calculator or yourself would uh, recognise this is a, a waypoint that a normal SID would come out of. You would go to the departures, and you can see it automatically realises that your first waypoint is RTUP, and click on it, and you can see they're all going to RTUP, so it understands which waypoint you're going to. To make it a bit more easier for it, you can select the departure runway, for example 30, and then it will understand, okay, you're running, departing at 30 and you're going to RTUP. These are the two different departures that you can take, the 4 Bravo or the 3 November. And obviously, you pick the one you'd like and then you'll click the dot and that will add it to your route, like so. And it's vice versa for the arrivals. So here's the RTUP 4 Bravo departure. Let's say you want to look at the chart for the SID, but you don't want to, like, lose all your routing and all of that. So what you do, you just click on it, and you can see there's this new icon here. If you click on the icon, it must be on the icon, if it's not, then you'll go to the actual chart. If you click on that icon, it'll produce an overlay on your map here, which is awesome. And you can zoom in, take a look at it, zoom out, and it's still there. You go over here, obviously it's still there when you come back to it. You can change different things, like the opacity, like so. Obviously 90 is my favourite because it's actually easy to read things and you can kind of still see things in the background. And if you like it as well, if you're doing this for the route, if you're choosing your departure and if you're liking this, you can always, always just pin it like so. And now it's pinned and let's say you got rid of it and you're not even selecting it, you can quickly go and overlay like so. So if you like this SID and you want to see more of it, you can either just pin it like I said earlier and just click onto that, or you can quickly, easily just go into the winded mode like so, and you can zoom in or do whatever. You can see a bit clearer as uh, there's nothing behind it. Or if you don't like it, then you can quickly just click the X and it's gone. As well, if you open up the chart list 
and you're on the SIDS page, you can quickly check the overlays for all of the different departures, like so. So that concludes this video on all the new Navigraph features. If you don't already own Navigraph charts, you can go and grab it from their website, link down below. Uh, there are many different pricing options uh, due to getting FMS data as well, if you want, or monthly or annually subscriptions. It's all in the link down below, and you can go and check out the pricings. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.